Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 5 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the assembly of the main frame and by the end of the video we should have the 3D image we see on screen now as a physical object. Let's buckle up. For the purpose of this video, we'll just recover and recap a few main points. So what we're looking at on screen here is a modified version of Dynebug's A10C plans, which I've made a total of 10 changes to to this point, just so it fits with my particular Simpit. And then I've drawn them in SketchUp so we can see what we're, we're looking to build as a frame. Now the nine parts that go into this frame, I've given them names and if we just have a, a look at those nine parts and I'll just recap what the names were given to them. So as we then look at the assembly of it, it'll be clear which parts we're referring to when they're mentioned. So we've got parts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. And those parts are, as per names I've given them, stick and fuse base, fuse size left and right, fuse fascia, base top, base sides, the back, rudder sides left and right, outer sides left and right, and the shelf. And those nine parts are assembled to form this unit here. And I'll just bring up to the side here a just a bit of a summary again confirming what those parts are number-wise and what they're referred to by name. So as of the end of the last video, we had cut all these parts and done a test assembly that took it to this point here. And we then finished by painting them. So if we just zoom out here and look, we know that we have these parts cut and as of where we are, as this video begins, we have all of these parts here painted. So what we now need to do is look at how we're going to put those together and then we'll do so physically. So I've put together a workflow that outlines the assembly and we can see the steps outlined here. If we just take a bit of a closer look at that, we can see that the first thing we're going to do is put together parts 1, 2 and 3 to make this item. So we put parts 1 and 2 together as can be seen here. We pull in part 3 the fuse fascia and that gives us this completed item. Now separate to that we take parts 4 and 5 which is the base top and the base sides and we combine them into this unit and it's stabilized by a couple of corner brackets that just sit underneath here. What we can then do is take this item which is made of a parts 1, 2 and 3 and sit it on top of this item that's made of a parts 4 and 5 and that creates this unit here. Now from this point all we then do is pull in all the other parts one by one to build it up to full, full completion. So we add in the rudder sides left and right onto that, which takes us to this point here. We then add the back to this. And we then add the outer sides left and right onto it. And then we've got these support blocks. So they have been inserted here and here. And that's just to ensure that should this uh, need to be relocated within a room or I need to do any maintenance to, to therefore need access to it or to move it out of the way, that as it's dragged across the floor that there's no damage caused because this will help secure the sides together. 
And the final bit will then be to take part nine the shelf and simply add that on top. So we can now see the completed unit and this is what we should have in front of us uh, as a physical item once we've put all the parts together. So let's start with part one, the stick and fuse base. With the mounting holes for the stick base and the channel to hold the wire in. Part two are the fuse sides left and right. Right you can see laid on the floor in front of us. And let's take a closer look at the left side. So we've got parts one and two in front of us now, which are spread across three pieces of wood. As part two is attached onto part one, on the underside of part one, the machine screw that goes through sits in a counterbore. So when part one will sit on top of part four, a little bit later on, it'll all sit flush. With parts one and two together, we can now look at part three, the fuse fascia. I was a little concerned about the thickness of the wood at the bottom of this piece, but it looks like it will be just fine. With parts one to three now assembled, if we just take a minute to pan around that. I think that the paint finish came out really well and it just makes such a, a big difference to see it assembled and painted as opposed to when it's just plain wood. Parts four and five for the base and the base sides, very straightforward. I left them assembled and painted them as just one unit. To ensure that the threads of the brass inserts didn't get paint in them, I did insert screws into all of the inserts just before I, I painted. It's time to put the rudder pedals in. So I use an M6 countersunk screw in black with a long thread and it fits perfectly in it looks just exactly as it should. With this key component in place, let's just take another moment to pan around and have a closer look at it. The overall depth of the front dash was increased by 30 millimeters and the reason for that was it ensures now that with these rudder pedals, if I was to press them in either direction fully whilst applying the toe brake, there definitely will be no obstruction at the back when the back piece, which is part six, is attached. So I now take the Hota stick and I can separate the base plate and the handle. So with the base of the Hota stick attached to part one, from a wiring point of view, let's see how we did. So the rectangular hole that was in part one was big enough for the end of the USB lead to pass through. And then you can see the wiring comes out the back and then I'll just use a little bit of electrical tape to hold it into the channel that it will pass through. Yeah, I'm happy with that and it was definitely worth the extra time it took to design part one in this way. So, so far, so good. I think that the base of the Hota stick, from a wiring point of view, if we just have a bit of a close-up look at that, it's now exactly as I wanted it and I pictured it. And I think that's so much better than if that wire had just been loose and came around the front and then just went underneath. So, as we can see, the wiring from the both that and the rudder will just both come out the back. And we know that in part six, we had the extra rectangular cutout for that just to pass through. So let's have a look and see how that marries up to the left console. So I've just attached part seven, the rudder side left, just so from a height point of view, we can see how that sits against the left console.
and it looks like the height's going to be just perfect. If we then attach rudder side right, and then we can move on and attach the large back piece, which is part six. Both parts of outer size left and right, part eight are now added. With part nine now added, which is the shelf, this unit to this point is now complete. So that's parts one to nine. And if we just take a look, I have also applied a clear sealant spray to all of this. So hopefully it will reduce the likelihood of any fingerprint marks. I'm glad I took the holes out of the original design that were on the outer sides. I think that having a solid end to it makes it look complete. And if we also have a glance at the back, we can see the extra rectangular cutout for the wiring to pass through. So that's the main frame now finished for the front dash. In the next video, we'll be having a look at a modification to the HOTA stick as an extension because um, obviously it needs to be raised away from the base that it sits on. So we'll be having a, a close look at that. Thanks for watching.